Welcome to the third and final meeting this evening. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of City of Beach Grove. This time we will call to order our uh, City Council meeting. In lieu of a roll call, I will ask each council member to introduce themselves to my left. Dave Mobley, City Council at Large. John Jennings, District 4. Dave Harrison, District 5. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Anthony Davidson, District 3. Ed Bell, District 2. Mary Bucher Stewart, District 1. Kathy Coates, Council at Large. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, uh, if we could have uh, representatives from Tri Kappa come up, please, to the podium for a proclamation. So this is a proclamation for Tri Kappa Week, February the 17th, 2013 to February 23rd, 2013. Whereas Tri Kappa is a distinctive organization that is limited to the state of Indiana. Whereas Tri Kappa was founded in 1901 by Mary Wright Sewell, is now more than 10,000 members strong with more than 140 Hoosier chapters. Whereas the local chapter in the city of Beach Grove is known as Zeta, Theta, and was founded May the 19th, 1961. Whereas Zeta, Theta chapter meets the first Thursday of every month at the Beach Grove Public Library. Whereas each year local and state tri kappa members give over $1.5 million to its endeavors of charity and education. Whereas members of the Zeta, Theta chapter of tri kappa give to many charities in our city and award scholarships to deserving high school athletes, or excuse me, graduates. Now therefore, I, Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove, do hereby proclaim February the 17th through February the 23rd, 2013, as Tri Kappa Week in the City of Beach Grove. In witness whereof, I have hereto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Beach Grove to be affixed this fourth day of February, 2013. Here, Donnie. Thank you so much. Any of you remember Rosie? Of course. <laughs> Almost started singing. It's good to see you. Folks, if you look up behind uh, where we sit at, there's a new uh, framed uh, Welcome to Beach Grove uh, stained glass um, structure. That was made by the good folks at First Christian Church. And the drawing was done by Marilyn Haskett, who's with us this evening. And what we would like to do now is have Marilyn uh, go up and turn it on for us. was donated by the First Christian Church. Uh, Ed Bell made the frame. Pastor Hardig, who's with us this evening, did the stained glass. And Ed's wife, Barb's with us tonight. Is there anyone else here from First Christian Church? Because I want to make sure we recognize them. Thank you for what you've done. And Marlene, thank you so much. Council member, uh, before you, you have the minutes of the previous meeting. 
dated January the 7th, 2013. At this time, the floor is open for comments or questions. If there are no, uh, no comments or questions <coughs> or corrections, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We have uh, two people who have signed up for public comments, <clears throat> and I'm Ray, is yours related to the sewer rates or just general? Yes, sir. Okay. And Dave and Michelle, is, are yours sewer related or just in general? Oh, Mr. Buckley, I did not mean to sign up to speak. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Ray, we'll call you when we do the sewer rate. Is that all right? Is there anyone in the uh, audience tonight who wants to speak on a matter not related to sewer rates? If not, we will proceed. Committee reports. Is there anyone here from the Greenscape Committee? If not, uh, RDC. Is anyone here from the RDC? Joe? Hi, I'm Joe Griffin with the uh, RDC. Night, so be be ready here. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm waiting on comments back from you guys. To tell me what went on at the meeting. Because you guys don't show up. That's the whole problem. I know I'm talking to my employers, <laughs> but remember, the RDC is very important too. Uh, I have to give Mayor Dennis congratulations. He does show up. I like to see y'all show up. After all, I do show up to both your monthly meetings for the most part. You know, redevelopment's highly important. And the council and the RDC have to work together, amongst other things. And we have to get on the same page. I would like to see it when we come up here where we don't have to give a report to where you guys can ask us questions because you guys were sitting there. That goes for the public too, please. You know, when you only have two people there. That's not much redevelopment, is it? Especially when it's a community redevelopment, because that's the only thing that's ever going to work, is a community involvement. That's how redevelopment works. We need the community involved, please. We need the council involved. I wish I didn't have to come here and give a report. I wish I could come here and discuss with you guys what went on at the meetings. That would be wonderful. That's real redevelopment. That's real-time stuff happening. I know I'm talking to my employers. I'll probably get kicked off, but, you know, I told you guys that when you guys put me on. If you don't show up, I'll let you know. I'm letting you know. Show up. I'd love to be sitting here talking to you guys about what went on. Some of the things that went on there, too, is uh, one of the discussions was is we got to make a um, some sort of agreement with the... Uh, Marion County for some sort of uh, uh, inspections of some sort. I was totally lost. You see, the redevelopment can make our own laws. We can do our own things. <coughs> and it's binding. You know, uh, redevelopment has also been a big political ploy. You know, you keep hearing about every election. Hey, what about the RDC? You know, they've been so, 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 so. I'm here inviting everybody, council members, public, please come. It's the only way you're going to get successful redevelopment. It's the only way redevelopment actually works. It's a shame I have to come here and give a report when we should actually be talking about what went on and you guys should be asking questions after having a couple minutes sitting back and thinking on it. That's what happens when you put me on, I'm here to tell you. I promised you it'd happen if you didn't show. I'm giving you guys hell. Show up. Public, please show up. It's the only way it's going to work. We've got to have everybody. It's not the RDC 
plan is the Beach Grove plan. And any successful redevelopment has to happen with everybody. We have to get them all on board. You know, you can have all the plans in the world, but if nobody shows or nobody does anything, look what happens. Nothing. So please show up. I guess that's my report. Any questions? When's your next meeting, Joe? The third Thursday of every month. And that will be here. Um, at this one, I'm going to ask that we probably move it with Main Street going to be redeveloped and everything else. Uh, Main Street's going to be happening. That's going to be a tough place for people to park. It's already a tough place to drive down just on what little bit we're having. You know, maybe it's time that we shift for a little bit for the better good of public. I'm going to bring that up at the next one. Yeah, it, it's tough enough. People don't really want to drive down Main Street the way it is now, let alone once it starts getting tore up. Even worse. But that is part of progress, too. Being flexible is part of redevelopment, too. Because one of the things I brought up, too, is, is we have to review our plans every couple of years, and we're far past that. We're far over exceeding. They, they suggest every two to three years. And this is where the public needs to be involved, too. Every two to three years, we have to look at our plans. We have to be flexible. It's been a lot longer than that, folks. And we need to start looking. But if the five of us start looking, we can't speak for the community. The community has to speak for itself. And that's what redevelopment is. That's one of the things we have to do. Any other questions? Hmm. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Public safety report. Chief? Mayor, board members, the uh, public safety met Wednesday on the 30th of January. The uh, three civilian members and the fire chief, myself, and the deputy chief were present. We had a few issues. One is a concern about uh, some trash in the backyard of properties. The Board of Health has, has been notified, and these people are in compliance, even though it does look bad. If it's up off the ground, the Board of Health says it's good. There's nothing we can do. Uh, the other, another issue is the fire department's getting the new fire truck soon. And the uh, <coughs> probably our biggest concern right now with the public safety and the police is uh, uh, school safety. The police department has offered the schools uh, to go through the schools and give them any advice that we can. The school, I know the high school is upgrading their security system and <coughs> our police officer is getting with the school system to give them suggestions. We also have plans to do uh, activities within the schools when the kids aren't there, activities that involve training our officers and the teachers about what incidences that we respond to and how we respond to them. Uh, we have a concern about our commercial vehicle ordinance. The members have been asked to go to citizens, their neighbors, and find out what they think of this ordinance. They were advised what it is and what they might think of it to bring back to us uh, the next meeting, which is the end of February. The members were also advised of the construction on Main Street. It's probably going to start the uh, 1st of March, as I understand. And our next meeting will be February 27th here at City Hall at 9 a.m. If anybody have any questions? Questions for the chief? I, I'm pretty, uh, I know the, the uh, K-1 building pretty well. Is there any um, thoughts on making that building more inaccessible? I know, I know you can, without a keypad, without anything, you can walk right in and be in the office without. Every school that I've been in is a concern, but I, and I talked to uh, our school officer who says that the school is upgrading the security, and I don't know how quickly that's going to be, but it is, and we've offered our assistance to uh, give them 
some ideas of what we think. And your school officer, is, you have someone stationed in? Mark, Mark Parker is our school officer, and he is in the high school most of the time. But he does go around to the other schools, right. all the Beach Grove schools, and Holy Name if he's asked to, and the Nazarene school. And he'll go to a, a kindergarten if they want that advice or just to have an officer in there. Thank you. Any other questions for the chief? Mary? I did have a question. You were talking about some sort of truck or vehicle. I wasn't. Uh, the uh, commercial vehicle ordinance. There's been a concern about that recently, and uh, I asked the members of the board to go to their neighbors and their friends uh, with what the ordinance says to get a little response back from them. Like, like vans? Vans with? Vans, tow trucks, any commercial, any vehicle that has business writing on it is considered a commercial vehicle. I thought that's what it was, but I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yes. Is that the one that we're introducing tonight? I believe so. <laughs> Thanks, look, Chief. Bob, oh, Ed, I'm after sorry. After looking at some of the report, he keeps busy at the school, so I'm very surprised. Uh, yes, he does um, keep very busy. Busier than what we thought he would be okay. with police work. Yeah, it's astonishing. He has to do that. <clears throat> We see these reports? Yes, it's uh, in, I don't know if Dan it's is, on but it's on the website. annual report. Yeah, the annual, re the annual report says report what the, the arrest he made and his, uh, how he's used his dog and the number of sniffs. Right. Any other questions for the chief? Thank you, Mark. Thank okay. you, chief. I didn't know if Jim Brooks would be here tonight. Uh, Jim is our ABC rep. Uh, in the last two months, there's been a renewal at the uh, Napoli Villa and the Moose Lodge. And then he informed me today that uh, there is a, a restaurant going in at Churchman Hill that will have a liquor permit, and they have to submit two more pieces of paperwork. And then... Uh, next month and then that will be final but he anticipates that that one will be approved as well is that ricky skirvin okay thank you yeah and then the last report is financial our clerk uh, i just passed out information to all the council people tonight that uh, i actually gave it the state of the city address and it's actually on the website too for anybody out in the audience who would like to see it With that, uh, if there's any questions for the clerk. Well, <clears throat> Dan, it was well written. Thank I you. Like that. Thank you. <clears throat> now we'll go. To, any other questions? We'll move to the May, uh, mayor's liaison report. Gary? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Good, Good to see you. Commercial vehicle definition is different in Marion County than it is here. So you could be fine here or not out, out of the city limits or vice versa. Commercial vehicle in Marion County is larger than three-quarter ton truck, uh, things that have a truck body on them, um, dually wheels, actually a dually wheel pickup truck if it's not your only uh, transportation is in violation as a commercial vehicle in Marion County so if you guys are different that's fine just be careful the Burmese American Community Institute had a grand opening they are the largest in the country right here in Perry Township they now count 9,000 Chin Burmese here in this township that's an awful lot of immigration. And guys, those are the guys that are going to be buying your houses and keeping your property values up. We are the largest, of the large cities, we are the only one that's growing. And it's because of this immigration. So it's legal. Everything's fine. And they're here learning. And uh, 
They're just bettering themselves just like all of our ancestors did. You know, I had a friend that uh, talked about the waves of immigration that came through and the, the Irish and the German and whatever. It's, it's the same thing. So, all right. Um, Great Indy cleanup we've talked about. April 6th is our part of town. State of the city speech. You had yours already. Mayor Ballard's is coming up Tuesday, February 19th at 1 p.m., which is different. Normally they're evening, 5 or 6 p.m. This is 1 p.m. February 19th at the Alexander Hotel. We've talked about the Alexander before, the new hotel that's downtown. Um, it's worth going to. I was just there recently. Uh, the Parks Department <coughs> has done something totally different. I know it's your parks is different than, than our parks. They have opened the weight rooms. For 10 bucks a month, you can get a pass to go into the weight rooms and work out. That's all different. They never used to do that. So if you're interested, you can do that. That to uh, combat <coughs> Planet Fitness? I suppose. Compete? I suppose. But they got to do something to raise money just like you guys do. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's life. Yes. Uh, community office hours. I have community office hours in Perry Township and in Franklin Township. They're both on Monday, so if any of you want to talk to me, from 11 to 1, I'm at the Perry Township Government Center. From 2 to 4, I'm at the library on Franklin Road. I have time to sit down and look at things in, in detail, so come out and see me. Most days, I have zero people show up. I have time to talk to you. <laughs> um, Mayor's Night Out, coming up Tuesday, February 12th, a week from now. 6 p.m. at St. Anne Catholic Church. Indicator Township. It's out in, the, out in the sticks. Greater Southport Business Alliance. I know that name throws you, but they're really trying to be a Perry Township th force. They're having their Taste of Southport membership drive, and so the Taste of Perry actually is what they call it. Taste of Perry. And you're Perry. They want you there. This will be at German Park. On Wednesday, February 27th, 7 to 8.30 p.m., German Park. Has it been a while since you've been to German Park? You know, it is Perry Township, too. All right. And we have some movies coming up. They have the old classic movies, and the Parks Department is doing some movies as well. This is at Garfield Park Art Center. And the next one coming up is February 16th at 7 p.m., this is two days after Valentine's Day, guys, so, you know, whatever. Remember last night, 1935, Robert Young. Couples awaken after a party to discover the party's host is murdered, but they're too impaired to remember the details. <laughs> ah. <laughs> there's there's no, nothing new under the sun, is there? <laughs> we talked about these a couple of years ago for vandals, taggers, graffiti. Uh, we've still got some of these brochures around. Did a great job on the brochure. This was an independent person that did it. If any of you are interested, I can get you some more of these. And that's it. Anything for me, folks? Questions for Gary? Oh, excuse me. It's on the back of this. I should have turned it over. We have a Mary, Marion County Greenways Master Plan meeting coming up. And they're doing one per township. Your township is Perry at Perry Meridian High School is Wednesday, March 6th at 6 p.m. The presentation will be at 6.30. If you're interested in talking about, learning about, having input into where trails go and that sort of thing, Greenway's master plan. This is your time to do that. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, go ahead. No. Anything else? Nope, that's it. How about the mayor coming out next week? He is scheduled to be there on the 14th at the uh, chamber. So I'm unfortunately taking time off. I'm going to be driving to Kansas City that day, so I won't be there. So I said, you know, you'll be there to kind of usher him in, and you'll be there to introduce him around. So if any of you out here in the audience don't know, he and Mayor Ballard have a great relationship. They get along really well. So is there anything I can do for any of you? Can I have your taste of Perry Flyer? Certainly. <laughs> And may I see the Greensway? Do you need that one? I got that one too. Excellent, thank you. All right.
Thank All right. you. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> he gets a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, we will uh, suspend the uh, regular meeting and go, go into a public hearing pursuant to General Orders Number 1, 2013, Sewer Rate Adjustments. There has been uh, one person sign up to speak, Ray Shu. Ray? No, you might not be. I'm going to ask if there's anyone else here who did not sign up who wants to speak. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on behalf of the sewer rates? Can I touch on that a little bit? Mm -hmm. I think last time the rates were taken up so dramatically that if everybody was up in arms. We've tried to do this a little bit calmer and more collected and take it up a little bit at a time. I think the reason there was such an uproar last time is it was such a uh, in-your-face 20% Cram down your throat. Fifty percent. Sure. I think I'm not pointing fingers. sit there and complain. When you have a city, it costs money to run a city. It costs money to run your household. So as prices goes up, your fees are going to go up because they can't pay it by themselves. Is there anyone else uh, would like to speak on behalf of the sewer rates ordinance? If not, I'll call Jeff Peters, our financial consultant, to come forward and give us some advice, Jeff. <coughs> Hello all, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, you know, as we talked before and uh, have for quite a while, the sewage works in order to continue to operate in the manner that you have and to um, provide your um, transfer money that goes from the utility to the general fund for those operations in the um, payment in lieu of tax and return on investment. You will have to raise the rates. It's been um, eight years since you've done it. Probably should have been done incrementally during that time period, a little smaller, but we're where we're at now. And that's something that you're going to have to do if you want to continue to provide the service and provide the municipal services that you've budgeted for 2013. And, you know, I'd be happy to go back through the rate study, or I know we've been through it a couple times or I can answer any specific questions, whatever you all would like to do. Floor is open for questions or comments. I just want to make sure that I, I understand um, on a resident that their billing is no longer tied to their water usage. Is that correct? Correct. The per unit that will be, how will that be measured? There. Well, it's going to be for each of those residential units. It's going to be the twenty-four ninety-five. Just the flat fee. Yeah, irrespective of use. So, we we taken that back out of the equation. Yes. Okay. Because that was the that was the biggest sticking point the last time. It was people arguing against everybody paying a fat flat fee. They wanted to base it on their usage. Yeah, and, you know, then that was the argument goes back to what is the minimum that you're going to be required. Right. So then you back into a minimum that says, okay, we're assuming you're going to use five units right. or whatever. So yeah. it's kind of the same thing. It's the same argument. And, you know, that's something that you can discuss. Somehow you're going to have to apportion the costs to a variety of different people, residential, commercial, industrial. And this is what's before you. It is the flat for the residential i just wanted to make sure i had it straight in my own mind because i've gotten no questions comments from anyone in any respect so 
I'm making the decision based on what's best for the city and what needs to be done for the city because I've had no input from the citizenry. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the other councilors, but that's <laughs> where I am with this. So that's all I wanted to know. Any other questions for Jeff? <clears throat> Thank you. I'd like to call Alan Hux up. Alan, could you come forward, please? <clears throat> <coughs> Thanks, Jeff. <coughs> Mr. Mayor and City Council, um, I'm Alan Hux. I represent, uh, I'm an attorney in Indianapolis for the firm of Tinius and Hollister, and I represent Willow Glen South and all other owner, apartment owners who are members of the Indiana Apartment Association. I think you can remember the first time I was here, we got off to sort of a, a bad start. Uh, we started all, all over. Uh, I'm here to support, uh, on behalf of my clients, the passage of this sewer ordinance. And I want to thank the mayor and the council president, uh, Mr. Bell, for listening to the concerns of my clients uh, and uh, drafting what I think uh, is a very uh, fair, reasonable, and equitable uh, rate ordinance. Uh, I felt, just as a background, I've been involved in sewer and sewer rates and charges for the last 20 years. I believe that um, after working with them and, uh, and looking at this ordinance, it is uh, fair, just, and equitable, and uh, will be uh, good for the city and will cover their uh, revenue. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer any Other than that, I would really support the, the ordinance. Comments from council members? Well, I just appreciate you coming up and saying what you did. Um, I think it was a <clears> fair <throat> and equitable decision conversation and that that makes me happy on behalf of the city thank you thank you, thank you. Sir. is there anyone else who would like to speak on behalf of the sewer ordinance if not we will close the public uh, hearing and reconvene the meeting under old business general orders number one 2013 is up for second reading and i ask for a motion to waive the rules to read by title only I make a motion to waive the rule and read by title only. I will second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. General Orders number 1, 2013 is an ordinance that amends Chapter 50, Sections 50.001, 50.021, 50.032, 50.033, 50.034, 50.046, zero are 50.047 and 50.084 of the Code of Ordinances <coughs> of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana. This time I'll ask for a motion to approve General Ordinance Number One, 2013, on second reading only. Mayor, I, I would like to offer a motion of amendment <coughs> to amend uh, to exclude the trash change fee I guess that's 50.047 that leave the rest that makes sense mm -hmm. Where's this at? Shit. Thought I had it's not it it's from the last one There's a motion on the on the uh, floor. Uh, can you hang on a second? Sure. I want to see what it says. Anthony, yeah, could you go into explanation a little bit further? Yeah. Um, on the fifth page. John. He wants to eliminate all the. About the uniform. He wants to eliminate the trash collection part of it. Would you like to offer an explanation why? Um, I fifteen dollar. Um, I believe that's the trash, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, fifteen dollars is what we set the commercial trash pickup to, um, and I 
for one, I don't see a justification to for uh, residents to pay the same as the commercial one. trash pickup. And for two, um, the study that was done, I don't believe included a uh, the commercial trash pickup once we instituted it, um, the changes that we've made, uh, the amount of trash that we're not picking up for free, uh, the uh, excess trash, the heavy trash pickup that we're doing now and charging for. Um, it doesn't include a lot of stuff. And so what I would like to do is not only would I like to amend it, but I would like to table at least that portion of it for at least another six months so it will get a year in, in the books before we, before we <clears throat> look at changing that and see what the uh, outcome is. You want to correct that? It was twenty dollars. Was yeah, the, the commercial trash fee is twenty dollars per tote. Twenty dollars per tote, and what we're asking for now is fifteen dollars per week. Per so month. it's month. excuse me, fifteen per month, and that would be every week. And commercial for twenty dollars is doing twice a week mm -hmm. for all month. So I think that's why that's per tote. So if they get two tote, it's forty dollars a month. What is the fee now, 10? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'll call for 20, back. For $20, you can get picked up twice a week. For $15, you can get picked up once a week. So I, want, this, this, I want Jeff to come back up and explain uh, the impact if it stays at 10. Okay, on the, uh, the rate study, on page 16, it breaks out the operation and maintenance expenses for trash. And this is one of the things, you know, when we look from that equity standpoint of since we've got the sewer rate together um, and all those expenses coming out of that same fund, we want to see how much is attributable to sewer versus how much is attributable to solid waste and the trash. The expense on that is about $740,000 in 2011. So. Coming up for inflation and the like, this $15 fee puts you at about $750 for the um, revenue to cover that expense that's going to be approximately $750. Right now it's at $500, which means you've got sewage works money subsidizing trash service. Now, a lot of those people are going to be the same, but still you want to try and get it as equally pigeonholed or appropriately pigeonholed as you can. As to the commercial um, trash ordinance, I'm not familiar with how that actually is going to bleed into here because the stuff we studied was out of 11. So I'm assuming if you implemented a new fee, you're actually picking up additional trash that you weren't before? Yes, but uh, it's not factored in that, Jeff, because uh, the, trash, the commercial trash pickup is very minimal. Okay. And, yeah, again, it's not going to be in our data set for 11. And some of the commercial trash that we were picking up, we were picking up for free. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You know, that would make somewhat of a difference. So your, uh, your analysis is if we don't leave it at 15, or if we don't move it to 15, we are going to lose again. Because you're going to lose about 250. So oh, you're going what to I'm have saying to is, is the, the sanitation portion, the stormwater or the wastewater fee is going to have to compensate because we're not generating I'm saying that's what's trash. happening now if you don't fix it if you actually leave it at 10 you're going to be 250 short period you're just going to have to cut it from somewhere and it's still going to have a disproportionate allocation between sewage works and solid waste can that be made as a definitive statement not knowing what we're collecting since we've only done this for six months with this new rate on the commercial, can that be made as a definitive statement that we will have to prop up? I would make it as a definitive statement because when we did the cost analysis, um, you're charging 10, it takes 15 to cover. So I can't believe there's that much commercial trash that you were picking up and not being compensated for that would completely throw that number. Thank you. Yeah. But, you know, it will be some number in between there. Our, our sanitation clerk is back here. Linda, did we have very many commercial pickups? No. Uh, I'm guessing 10. Less than 10? Uh, yeah, a yes or a no isn't going to cut it. We, is there a? Probably like 25, maybe. Okay. 
There's a motion. Uh, council made a motion to reduce the rate from 15 to $10. It needs a second. That was not his emotion. What? He wanted to table it for six months to see what right. numbers came in. It was he didn't, he didn't want he wanted to cut it completely out of this. But the motion was to cut. What was it? 10.47 completely out of the. And table it for six months was what the motion what the amendment was for. He didn't want to keep the rate. He didn't want to keep the rate the same. But he wanted to table it for. He six wants to months. take the whole fifteen dollars out. No. He wants to take the well, changes. Out. The change out. Yes. Right. He wants. To, he wants to amend it to delete that section, the entire, and just keep it as it is for six months. Was the original amendment. There's Correct. a motion on the floor. Needs a second. Lack of second. We'll move forward. A motion to approve uh, general orders number one, 2013, on second reading only. Now I have a uh, amendment, a change. Okay. Uh, on page four of general order, it's one, 2013, uh, D, um, where it says, the district shall charge, it should be the city shall charge. So you want a motion to strike district and add city? That's correct. Second? Second that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Motion to approve general ordinance number one, 2013, on second reading only. I'll make said motion as amended. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Nay. General ordinance number one, 2013, is up for third and final reading. I will ask a motion to amend the rules to read general orders number one 2013 by title only i'll make said motion i will second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed the same sign general ordinance number one 2013 is an ordinance that amends chapter 50 sections 50.001 50.021 50.032 50.033, 50.046, 50.047, and 50.084 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana. With that, I'll ask for a motion to approve General Ordinance Number 1, 2013, on third and final reading. I'll, I'll make that motion. motion. I'll second it. Uh, I'll do a roll call vote for third reading to my far right. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Okay, the general orders number one, 2013, passes on third and final reading six to one. Under new business, interlocal agreement with the city court, Judge Wells is here. Andy, could you step forward, please? <coughs> Welcome this evening. Thank you for having Good me. See you, Andrew. Sorry for my attire. I had a swim meet, so I threw on the collared shirt for you guys, um, but no suit. <coughs> oh, the floor is mine. Yes, sir. Um, every counselor should have in front of them was the interlocal agreement between the town of Speedway and the city of Beach Grove. Um, I'm not the parliamentarian here, so. Um, I guess what do you want from me at this point? Just to run through it or a basic explanation of what we're getting ready to do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is pretty much the identical agreement to what was um, put forth with Southport, and Southport's been utilizing the city court now for um, six months. This is a similar agreement with the town of Speedway, so Speedway will be filing um, there local ordinance violations um, 
and or depending on the Marion County Prosecutor's Office, there are infractions um, in our court. Questions? Has the relationship with South Fork gone well? Yes, from from our standpoint, it's been very very smooth. I've not had any um, complaints from Southport. They seem to um, um, uh, enjoy the uh, um, relationship. It's uh, um, their officers show up once a month for trials, and they file about a hundred tickets a month. Um, so it's it's worked well. Is it equitable for the city of Beach Grove to make this agreement? The um, on each filing in our court when a judgment is paid the city of beach grove receives nineteen dollars and fifty cents from that um filing so um south southport right now they have about 100 filings a month between 90 and 100 and um you're get, you conservatively you say 65 to 70 percent of those actually end up in being paid i want to i would say that number is probably slightly higher now because uh, a few months ago, we implemented a collections um, partnership with uh, a collection agency, and so they've um, started collecting some of these individuals that just <coughs> scoff at the judgment and don't pay. Um, Numbers-wise for the town of Speedway, I expect them to be um, in or around 200 a month. So if you take if you take what Beach Grove writes, what Speedway, or excuse me, what Southport writes, it's probably going to double that, maybe a little less, the 80, 90 percent increase. Judge, can you tell me how many uh, the Southport's writing, you think, and how many Beach Grove, and how this will impact your? Southport fluctuates a little bit, but it's anywhere between like 85 to 100 a month. I mean, it ebbs and flows a little bit. Um, and those are only local ordinance violations. Um, Southport doesn't file their infractions in our court, but I don't think they write very many infractions um, any, uh, anyway. Um, infra and just so you know, infractions are a, uh, is a state code violation. So if you speed and they write it on the state statute, that's an infraction. If it's written on the Southport local ordinance or the Beach Grove local ordinance, that's an ordinance violation. So that's the language. The difference for the, for the city that writes it is, is the revenue. Because if you write a, uh, a ticket or you write a citation on an inf state code, the state gets the fine. If you write it on um, a local ordinance, the, lo the local municipality that wrote it keeps the fine. So. Um, for when Southport and Beach Grove write a local ordinance, that's going to get you the 1950 that stays in Beach Grove. And then the, for Beach Grove, if they write a local ordinance violation, they also get a $36.50, somewhere in that ballpark. I might be a little bit off of a dollar or two. But that all then stays here. And, um, and so Southport, on all their tickets, they get uh, a $30 and some change that stays with them because they wrote it on local ordinance. Um, so what i'm sorry go ahead how will this impact your your caseload are you able you think you'll be able to do all this on your schedule two days a month yes um well right now we've only been um the caseload has been so low that we've only been doing um court hours two days a month but so much of our process is um automated and i don't want to say automated it's a little uh, the internet, I guess, is probably a better way to put it, is used, more utilized. And our computer system is more user friendly. So an individual can go on and pay the ticket, and then that just results in paperwork on our end, brief paperwork, um, which makes it a little nicer to move things through. Um, so, court time, the work on my end and, and Cindy, my clerk's end, hasn't really, hasn't changed much, um, but the court time required has decreased, which is nice because we don't have to get a bailiff, we don't have to use up the city hall. Um, so there's room to grow. Um, this, I would say we're probably running filing wise at a bottom level and anything new could be brought on without any problem. Judge, I know it's uh, early yet, but on your projection, uh, with the revenue, and uh, so forth, the addition to uh, the court will be hopefully in the black. I would ex I would expect with this um, with this re resolution that that would definitely um, 
I would expect every year to not have an issue with that. Um, if if they continue to write at a at the level they write now, they um, I had been told that they were roughly. We had a I had a meeting with them a couple <coughs> weeks back to talk about the procedures of how our court operates and and what they should expect from utilizing us. And they indicated that they write roughly six thousand tickets a year, half of which are ordinance violations. I and again I don't know what's going to happen with the infractions. Uh, that's up to the Marion County Prosecutor's Office where those are filed. We have jurisdiction for them. Speedway can't unilaterally decide to file those here, but their ordinance violations they can. So that would, I would say, conservatively to expect about 200 a month, because um, you never and they didn't give me any hard numbers. That was kind of they were ballparking, I think. But um, <clears throat> that doubles what Beach Grove and Southport combined right. So you'd get the city would stand of uh, C 1950 stay here. Thank you. Any other questions from council members or comments? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, I'll ask the clerk to read the interlocal agreement between the town of Speedway and the city of Beach Grove. Clerk. An interlocal agreement between the town of Speedway, Indiana, and the city of Beach Grove, Indiana. Whereas the city of Beach Grove, Indiana, and the town of Speedway, Indiana, are municipal corporations under the laws of the state of Indiana, and whereas both units of government maintain police departments to enforce the duly enacted ordinances to benefit the citizens of the respective jurisdictions, and whereas Beach Grove maintains a city court that has jurisdiction over infractions and ordinance violations, and whereas Speedway issues citations for infractions and ordinance violations, but does not have a town court within its jurisdiction, and whereas the Beach Grove and Speedway are located in the same judicial circuit, and whereas Indiana Code 33-35-1-6 allows a city or town that has not established a court to enter into an interlocal agreement under Indiana Code 36-1-7. With a city or town that has established a court and is located in the same judicial circuit. And whereas Beach Grove and Speedway are desirous of entering into an agreement pursuant to Indiana Code 36 1 7, whereby the Speedway ordinance violations can be filed, processed, and adjudicated through the Beach Grove Court. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Beach Grove and Speedway, acting by and through their common council and town council, respectively jointly agree to the following terms. Number one, Speedway shall file ordinance violations and infractions of the Speedway Municipal Code in the City Court for education. These violations shall include but not be limited to traffic, zoning, and permit violations written on Speedway ordinances. Number two, Beach Grove shall be responsible for the prosecution of all Speedway filings and the acceptance of any prosecutorial deferrals Prosecution, plea, and deferral determination shall be administered by the Beach Grove City Attorney acting and hereby designated the prosecuting attorney on behalf of Speedway, the prosecutor, unless otherwise designated in writing by Speedway. Number three, Beach Grove shall be responsible for the docketing and collection of all court calls and fines assessed. The distribution of calls shall be allocated in the normal course of business. Number four, Beach Grove shall collect and distribute fines and costs per Indiana Code 33-37-4-2. <coughs> Number five, Speedway shall initiate a deferral program with the city court and shall be responsible for all costs associated with the setting up of said program. The terms of the program shall be identical to the terms in place for the Beach Grove deferral program. It is the intention of the parties that the program in place will be identical as to the application <coughs> and administration of the program by the city court staff. Number six, it is the agreement between the parties that the city court shall distribute the funds available from the program as follows. One, court costs to Beach Grove or as otherwise specified by statute. Two, police training fund to Speedway. Three, fines and forfeitures to Speedway. All other fees associated with the program shall be distributed according to Indiana Code 34-28-5-1. <coughs> the 
All fees shall be distributed by the tenth day of the month following the month of receipt unless otherwise agreed to in writing. Each party shall execute any and all documents <coughs> and allocate the necessary personnel to carry out the terms of this agreement. Speedway and Beach Grove shall continue to cooperate to approve plans and procedures for implementation of the use of the city court <coughs> of Beach Grove for Speedway ordinance violations. Would you like me to take over? In the event there is a dispute <laughs> concerning said plans, the dispute shall be discussed by a dispute re resolution committee consisting of one member of the city's common council, two, the mayor of the city, three, one member of the town council, and four, the executive of the town. <coughs> Number eight, in the event there is an additional dispute concerning this agreement that cannot be resolved by the dispute resolution committee, the parties agree to submit th the issue to mediation pursuant to the Indiana rules of alternative dispute resolution prior to initiating lit lit litigation. Number nine, each party to this interlocal agreement may terminate the agreement upon 90 days written notice to the other party. The termi termination letter shall be served upon the mayor of the city or the president of the town council and sh <coughs> shall be sent by certified United States mail. That is the agreement. I'll ask for a motion to uh, approve the interlocal agreement between the town of Speedway, Indiana and the city of Beach Grove. I'll make said motion. I'll second. Get that down. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next is General Orders Number Two, 2013, Commercial Street Parking. I'll defer to Councillor uh, Davidson for. Uh, <coughs> uh, I'm going to withdraw the General Orders Number Two and replace it with another one. You're going to get a second copy. Uh-uh. I have one. We have one. We just need one down here. We've got them. This time I'll defer to the counselor for uh, introduction of General Orders Number 2, 2013. Thank you, Mayor. General Orders Number 2, 2013, an ordinance amending Section 72... Point two three of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, <coughs> whereas citizens of Beach Grove are often given a company vehicle to use for their employment, and whereas some residents do not have parking area in their alley and need to store their vehicles overnight, and whereas parking areas are set up for residents on some streets, and whereas Section 72.23 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, the Code of Ordinances, <coughs> must be amended to provide for the matters set forth herein. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, that Section 77.23 of the Code of Ordinances be amended and hereafter read as follows. No owner or operator of any semi-truck or person in charge <coughs> of the same shall park it or permit the vehicle to be parked or standing upon any street or alley between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. for a period of more than one hour. Therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council finds it just to amend Chapter 72, Section 72.23 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, be it further ordained that the ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby repealed, be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go to effect immediately after passage by the Common Council, signed by the Council President, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. Thank you. Floor is open for comments or questions. I would just like to add on to this. Um, for some reason, I have no idea why, um, that this was all of a sudden, uh, this old ordinance, 7223, which goes into a common citizen can't even park on, on a street, it was all of a sudden being enforced. And I was getting calls left and right. Um, I have no idea what sparked it, but in my opinion, you know, take home vehicles, you know, most companies have, and they do give out. I mean, they need to park just like everybody else. So that's what this was about. Was this prompted by the chief? Chief? Was this prompted by you? Was there some, was, there, was this, were you part of this, were in the writing of this? Councilman Davidson had asked me questions about it, but 
uh, yeah, the police department had questions about the old ordinance. Okay, because I have a question also. My, I understand that this is for people that take vehicles home. They have a certain amount of... <clears throat> my question is, if we have somebody that's running a business in Beach Grove and has five company vehicles, is this giving him permission to park all five? Do I need to amend this to limit the number of or is that not the intent behind this? I think, I think that uh, the number should be limited. Okay. It, and to answer the question, I've been on the department for over 30 years, and it's not new. When I was a, a reserve officer and a rookie, I wrote violations. So it's, it's nothing new that the police department has done since. But, but it does need to be updated. And our department has been talking to members, and we have a, uh, our public safety committee. They are also trying to get ideas also. So it, our idea is to limit big trucks and numerous vehicles from the same company parking within the same block or the same area. Well, in a residential area, is a person allowed to have four or five? I mean, is that not operating a business out of their home then, or is that allowed in Beach Road? They could be parking there and not operating a business out of their home. But there are several companies that park three or four vehicles from their home, and as I understand it, their employees come to that location to pick up the truck and go to their work site, wherever it may be. But yes, the, the number of vehicles, I think, should be limited, and the size of the vehicles needs to be limited. And Chief, we had talked a little bit before the, the meeting about limiting parades <coughs> by, um, as Gary has said, I think I don't see him in the audience anymore, by just how they do, like dualies and three-quarter ton pickups, correct? I'm not so sure that we want to limit three-quarter ton pickups because people have them as personal vehicles. Our idea is a commercial vehicle <coughs> over a ton weight that's on their license plate and multiple business vehicles parked within an area. And what you want to determine in an area you can, our idea is within the same block. Mayor, I would, uh, it sounds like to me that um, we need to go uh, pull this right at the moment and go to committee, uh, check with the you know, public safety and um, get community involved. I, I believe myself personally, I used to have a service truck and, you know, I, I made sure I didn't park on the street, but there's others out there who's got one vehicle and I, and I think they should, you know, at all hours. But we need to go and, and really specify this before we go any further. <laughs> I believe. Chief, With all due respect, I don't think that it needs tabled. I think it needs passed on first reading. Every one of these, most of these council members up here always said, I'm going to pass it on first reading and we can look at it hereafter. This gives us three months and your public safety meeting is in, still in February, correct? Correct, the end of February. Chief, can I ask a question here real quick? A, a dually, uh, which I think are close to a ton maybe? <laughs> no? Three quarter they, to a ton, but a dually parking on second or third or wouldn't that be? I mean, wouldn't that be a lot of? I don't, I don't know as I've ever seen one park out there, but there have been, and some of them are not commercial vehicles because they they don't spit or fit into that specification where they have a business writing on them. Okay, a lot of them are personally owned. Yeah, I've seen a lot of. Them. I mean, I just think it would be kind of a narrow get around if they were parked on. A, street like second or third or whatever. I don't think we want to go after a private citizen. Yeah. I think it's the businesses that we want sure. to limit what they park there and how many they park there. If I could also add to section B to this in which I intended to delete with this ordinance. Let me just go ahead and read this. No person shall park a vehicle on any street for a period of time longer than 30 minutes between the hours of 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. on any day except physicians on emergency calls. That's outdated. Right. That's what I say. Which we is why, that's, we that's why we're doing we need to keep yeah. it moving. We need to go 
Yeah, I'm doing good. This is a, I mean, this could be written tonight. Well, I don't like the way this, I mean, just saying semi-trucks, that's not, I think we need to. You have the power to amend, like everybody else. Well, I know that. I motion we accept general ordinance number two, 2013 on first reading. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next order of business is general ordinance number three, 2013, waste and refuge collection. I'll defer to Councillor Davidson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, general ordinance number three, 2013, is an ordinance adding section 96.10 to chapter 96 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, whereas citizens set out waste on public city property for collection from the sanitation department. And whereas often people go through waste when placed on public property, causing waste to scatter over roads <coughs> and alleys. And whereas thieves use the cover of picking trash to avoid suspicion. And whereas permits set in place would help identify pickers. And whereas the Common Council has determined waste collection should only be handled by the property owner the waste comes from the sanitation department and permit holders. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, that Chapter 96, Garbage and Refuge Collection, is hereby amended by the addition thereto of new Section 96.10 and read as follows. It shall be unlawful for a person to take waste from a dumpster container or bag when the container has been placed on public city-owned property without a permit other than the city, uh, other than the property owner and the Beach Grove Department of Sanitation. Waste may only be picked up from dawn until dusk. Permits obtained through City Hall must include a government-issued identification number and are good for a period of one year at a cost of $5. A violation of this section shall be subject to a fine not less than $50. Now, therefore, be it ordained that this ordinance only applies to the removal of trash listed above. Now, therefore, be it ordained that this ordinance goes into effect 30 days after approval of the Common Council signed by the Council President, attested by the Clerk Treasurer, and signed by the Mayor. And I would like to add, too, I would like to thank the uh, Chief uh, Mark for bringing this up to my attention and helping me uh, work on this. Floor is open for questions or comments. Yes, I have a comment. I'd like to ask Chief a question, <clears throat> please. Uh, okay, how could how would you go around enforcing it? Did they have to have tags they're wearing, or the they would have to have their permit on them. Either it could be in the window or on their person. And if they're driving up and down the alleys picking up trash, we this would give us that opportunity to stop them and see if they are permitted. As I talked to Councillor Davidson, the, the problem that the police have is the thieves use the cover, cover of night to steal stuff. And this will give us the opportunity to do an, an, a way to investigate people that are using that. As I've talked to uh, Department of Public Works, they really like these guys picking up the, the trash, the heavy stuff, right. takes it away from them. But we want to take away the thieves from using this cover. And so I think this permit if will they're do that. Picking up the big stuff, they just come in and get a permit and able to do that. Yes. How are we gonna make them aware that they need a permit to do this? The police department will give warnings for whatever, I. it will be posted on the website, the police department can post it, and I think that it would be a good idea that I implement at least a, uh, a warning to every person that stopped and maybe for a six month period that you have to get a permit. What's your name? We write it down and we keep a record of who we give warnings to. If you come back again, you've already had your warning. Here's your uh, violation. <clears throat> Further comments? I would just like to add a Thank you to uh, Dan McMillan also um, helping me with the price. Um, I believe, Dan, you want to speak on that? Will that cover your administration costs? 
be quite honest with you, I'm not 100% sure of that, but even if it doesn't, I think it's such a good idea from the standpoint of it gives police officers some discretion of pulling over a vehicle and, and making sure they're legit and not uh, someone wanting to break into a, a garage or, but uh, yeah, I think whatever price, I think that's fine. Any other comments or questions? Not asked for a motion to approve general orders number three, 2013, on first reading only. I'll make said motion. I'll second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, council appointment to the BZA. Last fall, Bob Maloof uh, resigned, and I had called downtown to make a determination whether uh, his re he was an appointment by the mayor through the city of Indianapolis or through the council. Well, I was informed that it was through the mayor through the city or through the city of Indianapolis. So I appointed Joe Hag. I later found out that that is not true. He is a council appointment. So I had to ask Joe, and Joe's here tonight. Uh, I had to ask Joe to withdraw from the BZA because it's not right. So there is an opening on the BZA and it is a council appointment. So I'm, um, at this time I will defer to the council president to proceed. Well, I believe since uh, we have an opening, uh, we should leave it uh, for a month, um, get nominations, talk to people, and then bring it, bring it through uh, the March 4th meeting and uh, fill it at that point. I think that's a splendid idea. I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And Joe, I apologize once again. And uh, he, uh, he attended one meeting and his vote had to be withdrawn in that meeting, so uh, we'll proceed. So if uh, our March meeting, if we uh, bring forward a uh, couple of recommendations for the BZA. I want to be on the record t tonight uh, that I'll nominate Mr. Hag because he he'd worked with me on a committee. Matter of fact, the sewer uh, committee. So I know him very well. Okay. With that, we'll move to uniform conflict of interest for Lynn Rackaway. I'll defer to the clerk. Dan. Okay. Uh, Lynn Rackaway is a lieutenant with the Beach Grove Fire Department. Uh, he does our IT work for the city of Beach Grove. Um, he says, I do computer work for all city departments and take care of the servers, network, and phone systems at a rate of $40 per hour. Um, Lynn has been doing this for a number of years. This is just a standard conflict of interest that we do on an annual basis, and his needs to be renewed and I would recommend to the council that it is approved. Questions or comments from council members? If not, I ask for a motion to approve the uniform conflict of interest statement for Lynn Rackaway. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Last order of new business is I was going through some uh, state statutes and I stumbled upon Indiana Code 36-4-13-1, appointment of a youth advisor, section one. The presiding officer of the legislative body of a municipality may appoint an individual who is not more than 18 years of age to serve as an advisor to the legislative body on matters affecting youth in the community. When I came upon this, I asked our city attorney to see if this code was even still in existence or if it had been uh, amended or deleted. Give me the, tell me about this. And he advised me that this is still in force. So we had earlier passed an ordinance pursuant to the youth advisor, our youth representative for the uh, council. So at this time I'll defer to see how the council wants to proceed. And uh, 
does you know if the or the state statute says a presiding officer of the legislative body a municipality may appoint an individual so it is up to the presiding officer how he would like to proceed if he would like to stay with the format that we're doing now or would he like to just move forward and appoint someone well uh, <clears throat> mayor i would like to find out uh, from council uh, davis uh, i haven't heard or seen any list yet of how many do you have so far? <clears throat> uh, My I'm son's on it. Not 100%, but I believe we had uh, two uh, sign up. Um, we didn't have a very good um, marketing campaign, I guess, of this. And I was talking to um, Steve Cox the other day um, and suggested that we would probably pick this up at the beginning of the school year. That way we would have the rest of the year, we'd have plenty of time to advertise this. A lot better response. I feel at this point, um, maybe we'll get together uh, and have the two to talk with. And at this particular point, you know, um, if they'd be willing to be represented on there, go ahead and, and start it. And then if we get more next year, I, I personally know there are more than two on it. I know my son is one of them. As long as he doesn't have to come to a meeting with his father, <coughs> he has no problem sitting on this on this board. Um, but I, I do know that there are more than two involved. I think there are two that have filled out their paperwork. Uh, I'm not sure this is very high on Mr. Cox's priority list. So I think with a, with a nudge and to let him know that we are interested and we're waiting on some feedback, I think the response will be a little bit better once he knows that we are waiting with bated breath for him to pass out the paperwork. <laughs> so I, I do know that there are more than two involved. I know personally more than two that are involved. Okay. So there will be some interest. Well, I, I uh, just asked the uh, council then, uh, what would you sign. think? Would you want to you know, start this as of the state and we'll leave? our youth council as it is and at least get a student on board uh, for this Does anyone uh, I'm open for suggestions here I think that should be the first order of business we take care of when we get more than three or four members we'll discuss with them if they want to have an advisor that okay that's how you want to proceed um, president yes all right that concludes new business. At this time, we'll start with council comments. To my far right, Dave. Um, the mayor's night out is. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. You didn't appoint. I, I knew he wasn't going to say much. Uh, April 6th is the uh, <clears throat> indie cleanup in our area, as Gary said. Um, and it's mayor's night out uh, coming up. And I think they said it's a Decatur Parish. Uh, was it St. Anne's? Mm hmm. So that's, that's quite a haul. I believe that's off of 67 or at least in that direction. And um, if you'd all join me in singing happy birthday to Dan. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, support your local schools. Uh, still some good basketball being played. Um, it's been a long meeting, so I won't go ahead and tell you the latest. But uh, they try hard. They play well. They need your support. That's all I have. Dave? Um... Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and I know the sewer rate is not what everybody wanted to hear, but I think it's what we had to do. And um, that's pretty much it. Okay, Anthony. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Judge Wells and Mary for um, the uh, interlocal agreement. Um, I'd like to ask a, a just. Uh, I'd like to just run by a few things. Um, Mayor, in the state of your city, you voiced your opinion on the elimination of voting rights to the excluded cities, um, which involved Beach Grove residents voting for uh, Mayor of Indianapolis, and you uh, voiced your opinion on your uh, opposition of it. Uh, I would have to agree with you, and I would encourage all the, all the citizens to contact uh, Senator Greg Taylor. Um, he, it's actually in the Senate right now, not the, not the state legislature. Um, to contact him and voice your opposition of it. Um, he's a resident of Northwest Indy. It's crazy that he's uh, in favor of it. 
Also, the um, the mass transit uh, you referred to, um, <coughs> mass, and you stated that it was um, not a benefit to Beach Grove because it didn't cover Beach Grove. Um, false. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and put it out there. Um, mass transit includes not only trains, but it includes buses. Um, this mass transit bill includes better buses, more routes, more stops, um, and it does go all the way down to Greenwood, not just stop at 70. Um, as for the elimination of the uh, four at-large seats on the, count on the um, county council, um, that is in the Senate as well. Um, that's Senate Mike Young. So if you have an opposition, I would stress your... Uh, concerns to him. Um, also, I, I saw executive order number two on the website, but I'm missing executive order number one. So if oh. we could okay. get that on the city website so we could, so we could see it, that'd be great. Other than that, thanks everybody for coming out. And uh, thank you everyone for coming out. Um, there is one uh, comment on February 9th at the uh, Senior Citizen Center. Um, it's a kickoff for the Relay of Life. It's a uh, going to be a chili cook-off. And I left my times. Do you, anyone I'm know? not sure of the time. Noon to, three. Noon to three. Noon to three. Noon to three. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's uh, for a great cause. So please come out and support it. Thank you. Mary. No comment this evening. Sir. Anthony. No, thank you for everyone. Next meeting is March the 4th, 2013 at 7 p.m. I forgot one. Go ahead. I apologize. There was once one that I wanted to mention. The 8th grade boys <coughs> basketball team went 18-0, and 0, undefeated. It's been 47 years since a basketball team for Beach Grove went undefeated. <laughs> My apology to the 8th grade team. I should have been on top of that. Thank you. The... Uh, Excluded cities should uh, be able to vote for the mayor of the city of Indianapolis because 24% of your tax dollars goes to the city of Indianapolis. So you ought to have a say in who the mayor of Indianapolis is. Number two, the mass transit. The last rendering of the MPO for that showed no change in the mass transit for the city of Beach Grove, Southport, and Greenwood. I cannot support a bill that's going to raise your taxes when when the only people that is going to benefit are north of I-70. So I am not willing to pay property, uh, increased property taxes for people to get back and forth from Indianapolis to Hamilton County. I'm just not going to ask you to do that. Uh, and the, the uh, last one that he mentioned was the four at-large council seats. I'm adequately opposed to that. They should be on the council. That's just like asking to remove two here. Those people should have a say, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Motion to adjourn. I'll make said motion. Second. Second. We'll be adjourned at 820.